Continuing from our previous lesson, we'll start to make some further adjustments to the materials in our scene. Okay, so we're going to pick up right where we left off just a moment ago with uh, continuing the process of starting to replace some of the standard materials that are scattered throughout this scene. So with my material editor still open, let's go ahead and we'll clear the view so we can go ahead and just keep things nice and neat. Let's come in. And in our previous lesson, we replaced the material for this wing. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the body. We'll just use our eyedropper to come in here and sample this. Now this one we're going to do a little bit different from the process that we did in our previous lesson. So you can see we have these two standard materials that are going into this multi and sub-object material. So this actually makes things a little bit easier. All we need to do is make a new material. We'll once again use our Metal Ray Architectural and Design. Let's double click on this standard. And what I want to try to do is grab the colors from these. So I'll just right click, hit copy, go back to my architectural and design material, right click, and choose paste. And now we have that exact same color. Now for the reflectivity, once again, you can uh, maybe start to dial that reflectivity down a little bit. Maybe 0.4, I believe, is what we used in our previous lesson. I will go ahead and turn on this highlight and final gather only. And I'll go ahead and turn on this Fresnel Reflections. Okay, so now that we have that set up, what we can do is take this new architectural and design material, and I'll just replace the connection into this multi sub object material. There we go. So now we no longer need that. And once again, you can see because there are no longer any triangles in the corners, that means that this material is no longer being used by any objects in the scene. You can see now, though, that they do appear over here. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same thing down here. Let's double click. Let's first grab the material color. So let's just copy that. Once again, Metal Ray Architectural and Design. Double click. Let's paste that color in. There we go. Once again, highlights and final gather only, so that way there's no actual reflections being calculated. We're just going to use specular highlights to fake that. We'll drop that reflectivity down a little bit and enable the Fresnel reflections. Okay, now we can come in here, replace that connection, and there we go. That should be all that we have to do. So now if I come in, re-render that. Now we have that new architectural and design material that is on this uh, aircraft body. There we go. And you can see it does have a little bit more realistic highlights, more of this natural Fresnel reflection where these areas that are more directly facing the camera are not very reflective. As we start to angle more heavily away from the camera, we start to get much stronger highlights in these areas. Again, that's the way things behave in the real world, and that is uh, part of the realism that we start to get with these materials. So once again, whenever we're finished, we can just clear that view. That will go ahead and clear everything out, and it will also delete any unused materials from the scene. Great way of keeping things nice and organized. Now let's come in and continue this process through some of the other parts of the body. Now we have these uh, parts of the tail here, so we have this texture that's being composited together to form the tail. Now we have a similar situation to what we ran into in our previous lesson. So we can see we have a lot of this uh, sort of a green color that's being mixed together. But if we look at the texture itself, there's actually no green in here. Okay, so this once again, sort of this green material, or this green color is coming from some of the ambient color that's popping through. So that's going to become a problem for us, though, whenever we use this architectural and design material. If we take that diffuse color map and plug that in, again, because there's no green in here, there will not be any green in here. So we're going to do just like we did in our previous lesson. We're going to come back to our standard material. Let's right click and let's copy this green color We'll go back to our composite node, and we'll add the green color in here. So let's add a new layer. Let's click on this to color correct this new layer that we just made. And let's paste that green back in. Very nice. So here's our green color. We're going to take that, drop that below. So now we have the green color in the texture, which means now that green color can show up as part of our material. Very nice. So once again, Reflectivity down to about 0.4. I'm going to turn on highlights only. 
and enable my Fresnel reflections. Okay, so once again, we need to right click on this material, select and select by material. Again, 3ds Max will automatically make the selection for us. So if we scroll up, we can see there's the object that has that material assigned. Let's select, right click on this architectural and design, and assign material to selection. It's all the way up to the top, getting cut off on your screen, but that should go in and replace that connection for us. Now, once again, you'll see that this turns sort of a grayish color. That's okay, that's completely natural. All we have to do is just right click if we wanted to show that and just show shaded material in the viewport. Okay, very nice. So once again, clear the view whenever we're done. Okay, and we're just going to continue this process through the rest of this aircraft. So let's come in. Looks like that part's already been replaced. We can come in and maybe grab something like this cockpit over here. So you can see that that is uh, using sort of a multi-sub-object material. We have a couple of different materials here. So let's replace these. So once again, right-click. Let's drop in a metal ray architectural and design. Let's double-click on this. One of the nice things about this architectural and design material is that it actually comes with some pre-built templates. So let's say we wanted this to be something like glass. We can scroll down. There's actually several different glass presets that we can choose from. So in my case, I'll choose something like this glass thin geometry. There we go. And I'll just take that and replace that connection. And now we have this cockpit that turns from a blue to sort of a more realistic glass. Okay, down here we have sort of this vinyl and plastic. So let's once again make an architectural and design. We can double click on that. Again, if you wanted to maybe change that to a matte or a pearl or a glossy, we have several different uh, options that we can choose from. Let's maybe go with something a little bit more of a matte finish. I'll leave that as it is. Once again, let's replace that connection. And there we go. So we can come in and take a quick render of that to see what we're starting to get now. There we are. Very nice. So really this becomes a, a fairly painless and fairly easy process. So if we come in, and let's maybe replace a few more of these before we finish up this lesson. Let's grab something like these guns right down here. So right now these are using just a standard default. Well, let's replace those with a new metal ray architectural and design material. We can double click on that. For these, let's maybe choose maybe a brushed metal. There we go. So that'll give us kind of a nice brushed metal appearance here. Once again, we can just take this standard material. Let's right click. Let's go to select by material. Go ahead and select. That'll select all the objects that are using this. Right click and assign this new material to those objects. There we go. And that's just hoping to add just a little bit of extra realism to uh, this aircraft and some of the surrounding objects. Now let's go ahead and do quickly the same thing to this uh, landing pad here. We just move up and out of the way. Let's come in and try to sample this material. So here's our standard material for this landing pad. Once again, we can right click, go with a new metal ray architectural and design material. Let's take this landing pad bitmap, plug that into the diffuse color for this architectural and design. For my case, I'll go ahead and take the reflectivity, maybe bring that down to zero, and make sure that we're not going to calculate any sort of reflections here. Very nice. And now I can just take this uh, landing pad, its standard material, the connection that's going into connection one, and I'll just replace that with this new architectural and design material. And I'll do the same thing down here. So new metal ray architectural and design. Give it maybe sort of a medium white color. Once again, I'll take its reflectivity and pretty much bring that down to zero. Replace that connection. And that should be all there is to it. Okay, very nice. So you can see, again, how that just kind of adds a little bit of extra realism to this. Um, as far as the materials are concerned, just a, a little bit more realistic effect than what we had previously. Now, very quickly, before we wrap up this lesson, I do want to take just a moment to uh, talk about one of the things that I really, really especially like about these architectural and design materials is the fact that 
uh, when you start to run into some of these shading problems where maybe you want just a little bit more detail in the shadows or you want just a little bit stronger contact shadows, this is a great thing to use a feature called ambient occlusion to try to achieve. So ambient occlusion is really just a simple little shading trick. So ambient occlusion is really good for simulating contact shadows and things like that. Uh, for example, between this little landing strip and the ground itself, what ambient occlusion will do is it will try to look at surfaces and determine how far apart they are. As these surfaces start to get really, really close together, it'll try to shade the areas underneath that surface a nice dark black color, or whatever color we choose. As we start to move into areas where these two surfaces start to get further and further away from each other, that black area that we're starting to shade with becomes less and less opaque until finally we start to reach some of these areas where there's no object that's close to the ground and we get basically just the standard ground color back. So this ambient occlusion is a really, really nice way of faking some of the contact shadows in these areas. And the reason that I like using these architectural and design materials for a metal ray is the fact that they have built-in ambient occlusion. Now the downside is that we do have to enable this on a per material basis. So if we come in to view and let's just lay out all. That'll organize these a little bit better. Let's go into something like this ground. So here's the architectural and design material. Let's scroll down and here where it says um, I believe it's going to be special effects. Yeah, we're going to open up that rollout and we're going to find ambient occlusion in here. So here we can define the shadow color. We'll make that a nice black. And here we can choose the distance. Now, the distance is going to be based uh, on some kind of a real world distance. So in our case, based on the uh, distance here, we'll try to use uh, some of these metal ray or these uh, 3ds max grid units to sort of define how far these should reach let's go ahead and just leave these at the default 16 for now so this once again is going to be affecting this ground plane or this landing pad material and you can see sort of the effect that we're starting to get here so if we roll that in I'll just use my middle mouse wheel we can start to see this ambient occlusion having some sort of an effect where these two surfaces as they're very very close together we get a darker color as these two surfaces start to move further and further away from each other, that dark color starts to become less and less. And like I said, it's a really, really good way of faking some of these contact shadows in areas that otherwise would have been pretty difficult to uh, get these nice dark shadows into. So, like I said, unfortunately the problem is that we are going to have to come in and enable this on a per material basis. So, let's go into our other metal ray material, our architectural and design, special effects, ambient occlusion, set the color to black and as far as this max distance goes we'll probably leave this pretty close to its default setting but what you could do is if you wanted these darker effects to reach further and further out and have an effect over a much larger area so if you wanted the wings to actually be able to cast some kind of an occlusion shadow on the ground you could start to increase this max distance until you started to get that effect but typically ambient occlusion is really best used for being able to pull out some of these smaller little detailed shadows so for most situations, you'll probably want to leave this nice and small. So that way, again, it just kind of affects these nice little smaller areas and just helps some of these little details pop. So just to keep things moving along a little bit uh, faster pace here, what I'm going to do is take just a moment to come through here and enable ambient occlusion on all of these metal ray materials that I've uh, spent the last couple of lessons creating. So go to ambient occlusion once again. Value to black, and I'll keep this distance set up to about 10. Okay, now I'm going to pause this for just a moment while I finish working on the rest of these. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just applied this to the rest of my materials. So let's see what that's going to do for us. I'll take this existing render. Let's clone that so we can have something to compare this to. We'll come in and do a quick render. And if you take a look at what we have as a result, it definitely is a fairly subtle effect, but if you look closely, you can definitely tell that it is there. So previously in areas like this wing, uh, we really didn't have a very good attachment here. There's really no sense of shading there. But now with this ambient occlusion, we can sort of get a little bit more of that detail and sort of some nice soft little shadows in there. 
We also have some really subtle little soft contact shadows, kind of where this uh, intake vent is making contact with the body. Previously, we didn't really have that. And it also helps to add maybe just a little bit of additional shading to things like these little guns and turrets on the underside, where we have sort of this distance base ambient occlusion. Before, we really didn't have that. And it just sort of makes them look like they're floating there. So it definitely is a subtle effect, but it is one that I find really just kind of helps add that little bit of extra realism to your scene. Okay, so now that we have our material set up, we're ready now to start talking about some specialized render options that we can start to enable on certain objects in our scene. We'll start to talk about that in our next lesson.